Number four is Harem's Royal Take On, and the last one in will be number five, Piper's Return. They're at the post, and they're off. Oh, quickly in the center of the track was Harem's Royal Take On. Towards the inside is Just Black and Blue, and from the extreme outside is Piper's Return, trailing his caraway zoom in first. It's Just Black and Blue. Along the inside is going to win the opener. Harem's Royal Take On second, and Piper's Return completes the triactor. Race one numbers unofficial, 145. The unofficial winner of the first race was number one, Just Black and Blue, second number four, Harem's Royal Take On, and third number five, Piper's Return. The first race are now official. The winner was number one, Just Black and Blue. Three-year-old three brown gelding by Just Louisiana Blue at a black Rosalita by Sweet First Down. 
Bold in Louisiana by Aaron Crisman. Just Black and Blue is owned and trained by Craig Spada and ridden to victory by jockey Corey Spataro. Rechecking from top to bottom, order of finish in your program should read 1-4 vet scratch, 2-3. Race 1 payoffs, number 1, Just Black and Blue, 280 to win, 210 to place, 220 to show. 4, Harem's Royal Take On, 320 to place, 210 to show. And 5, Piper's Return, 210 to show. The 1-4 Exactor returns $6.90. And the Triactor, if you add the numbers 1-4-5 for $1, return $3.55. There we are. There we are. Congratulations to Craig Spada, owner and trainer of our race one winner today. Jess Black and Blue emerged from the fight with no black eyes, okay? He won, and uh, the favorite players are happy. $2.80 to start off our daily double. Corey Spatero, the winning rider. Um, come on over, Corey, and tell me about Jess Black and Blue. He'd had four starts this year, all around the edges getting there. Um, was he just a slow learner? What was the key to getting him to win today? Uh, just a bit of a late bloomer, I think. Uh, I kind of thought this at the beginning of the year. Uh, I thought maybe mid-season he'd be kind of coming into himself. But, uh, you know, a couple uh, couple good outs, and we kind of just changed a few things around and changed some gear up. And uh, now he's really starting to leave the gate and, and come uh, running. So he'll be all right now. And uh, you're forming a, a team with Craig this year. Um, Craig, of course, has his horses at Fort Erie. Um, and you guys have had a lot of seconds and thirds. I got a feeling that the horses are going to start uh, really winning a lot now. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. Uh, again, we kind of did a little bit of overhauling of a few things and uh, changed a few things up. And I think they're all kind of coming around now. Uh, just uh, watch out for us in the near future. Well, thank you, Corey. Craig, come on over and tell us about the long drive from Fort Erie to Ajax. And I know also uh, you've been dabbling in thoroughbreds now and had a thoroughbred winner. But first of all, how are how are you uh, feeling about the season with your quarter horses uh, training at Fort Erie and coming here? Um, yeah, how are you feeling about the season so far? Well, the, the drive uh, home today will be easy. How's that sound? <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not that bad. I enjoy having a real racetrack to train on. That makes it uh, a lot of fun. Um, we've had a little bit of a slow start. We've been hitting the board, like you said, quite often, but we did some adjustments in some feeding programs and um, certainly um, got some horses to where I think they should be now. So uh, I, I do spend a lot of time with my two-year-olds. I've got six of those. So those uh, keep keep a little bit of the time, uh, and that's my true love. So we'll, uh, we'll see how we come the next little while with those. All right. Well, thank you, Craig, before we get sprayed by the water truck. <laughs> and we'll see you guys coming up for the second race. 